One of the perhaps slightly overlooked qualities of the uh, DJI Action 2 is its ability to accept USB audio. And in this, as far as I'm aware, it's just about unique. I'm not aware of any other camera which will accept USB audio mics. Um, in fact, I don't know of any other device of any kind, apart from uh, phones, tablets, computers and that sort of thing, which works with USB audio. USB audio is really just digital audio and seems to me to be a lot to be said for working entirely in the digital realm if we can. So um, today's little demonstration is with the Shure MV88 Plus microphone. This is an intriguing device. It's a stereo mic. It works on a mid-side principle, which means it has one capsule pointing straight forward and another figure of eight capsule pointing left and right. And by mixing those two together in the right way, you end up with either a um, cardioid mic pointing forward, like a mono mic, or at the other extreme, you end up with uh, mics um, pointing left and right, which if you turn it round, you can use for interviewing people. So one's on one side of the mic, one's on the other side of the mic, and only those two people get picked up. Um, and if you combine the two to various degrees, you get uh, mics with an effective stereo width of from, in this case, 100, 120 degrees, I think, down to um, probably 45 degrees. So quite narrow. Um, and the nice thing is that if you record, as I'm doing today, the separate mid and side signals and then in your editing system you combine those in whatever way you want you can go from the mono signal that i'm going to be using for this part of the presentation through to the wide stereo uh, setting which i'll use later on when i go for a little walk in the park um, why use external mics with the djr action 2 in the first place well um, apart from the fact that, um, as I just indicated, you can get some extra flexibility, uh, the built-in mics of the DJI Action 2 are a bit susceptible to wind noise. They're bound to be. I mean, you can't put a windshield over the whole camera, otherwise you wouldn't see out the lens and the whole point would be lost. Um, so with an external mic, you can put a dead cat on it, which is what I've got here. And um, you can um, thereby not have to worry too much about wind. I've not actually used this out in out of doors so far, so it's going to be interesting to see how it fares on this slightly breezy day. So um, other features of this particular mic are that it um, has a limiter which stops the um, uh, stops the output clipping if it goes a bit above what you might expect have expected. It's got a compressor, which at the moment I'm not using on the voice, but I'll turn it on in a moment. Um, which enables you to make the voice much more punchy, so the loud bits of the voice get chopped off and the quiet bits of the voice get turned up. Um, and um, it's uh, also got an EQ, which is quite effective, so that if my voice sounds a bit thin at the moment, I can add a bit of uh, bottom uh, bass to it or roll off the treble frequencies, whatever. So all of that is possible within the mic itself. Those settings are controlled um, using an app on my Android phone, or it could have been iOS. Um, and um, so the only slight hitch, as it were, is that if you do want to reconfigure the mic during your um, video session, you've got to have your uh, phone with you to unplug the mic from the camera, plug it in the phone, reconfigure it, plug it back in. Whatever settings you make are retained. And so if at home you think to yourself, well, I just want to have it set like that and forget it, you don't need to take the phone, um, it will retain that setting. So I'll try just doing some um, heavy compression and bass lift on the voice for a moment, just to illustrate that, and then we'll go walkies. OK, now I've made those um, alterations in the uh, mic configuration. So it's now should be sounding a bit more bass heavy because I've raised it by 6 dB at 100 cycles. And I've got the compression up full so that it should be um, loud all the time, as it were. Even if I speak a little bit quieter, it should still be very 
easy to hear it. And if I start to shout at it, well, actually, I can see it slightly overloading on the camera. I should have um, played around with the level settings a bit. Uh, level setting can be done in the app itself, and um, which is quite straightforward. There's a big slider for the purpose. Also within the app, you can uh, save various configurations for future reuse, give them a name and so forth. So you can quickly flip between sets of settings that you would normally use. OK, now having done that, I'll put it back the way it was, so the kind of flat settings. And um, there goes the car. Uh, I'll go back to the flat settings and let's see what happens. Now my subscribers may say, oh no, he's back at that lake again. And this is indeed the case. Um, but it's a useful area. There's a little bit of bird song and stuff happening, dogs barking, the wind is blowing. It's a pleasant uh, lakeside scene. And um, uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how it goes for wind noise. Um, two things I must point out. The mic has a headphone socket on the back so you can monitor the audio if you want. I haven't bothered today, but um, handy facility. Also, when you play back the uh, video, the audio comes out of your headphones attached to the mic, which is um, a useful facility. And um, lastly, the mic is powered by the camera. You don't have to have batteries or anything. Downside is, of course, it will be draining the camera a bit. I don't know by how much. I doubt whether it's radical. So anyway, let's um, carry on walking and see how it goes. talking right behind the microphone and so uh, in theory not much of my voice should get through. It'll be interesting to test for that when I get home. worth noting that on the right of the picture there's um, a main road not far away so you will hear a bit of traffic noise. Not much at this point but we'll walk towards the traffic. I'm now in post-production going to put this into cardioid mode so it'll only hear my voice. Uh, just pointing out as I walked past that house you might have heard a piano faintly being played somewhere in the house. It'll be interesting to see how well that comes out on the recording. Uh, it would have been off to your left hand side. Okay.
carry on back to full stereo. Now at this point I'm um, quite close to the road uh, which you should be hearing on your right. I'm now going to in post-production switch this to cardioid mode to just pick out my voice and reduce the traffic noise. Here goes. Now you, you should be listening to a mono signal just comprising of my voice and with a bit of spillage from the traffic but it should be a lot clearer than it was um, at the start of this shot. I should mention that all the way through I've had a bit of bass lift. This is a tiny bit, if, tiny bit thin microphone. Um, it does benefit from a bit of extra at the bottom, but that's um, entirely to taste. Some people like a brighter, clearer sound. Um, the choice is yours when you make the recording. So now I'm going to carry on walking up to the road and hear the sound of traffic and stereo image which that gives you. Now for the last bit of this um, demonstration I'm going to remove the dead cat and put on the um, sort of sponge type um, wind muff that comes with the camera. The dead cat I'm using, I forget whether I said before, doesn't belong to this microphone. It comes from something else but I'm hoping it's going to do a reasonable, jo reasonable job. Here's the little um, wind muff that comes with the camera. Um, it may be Okay for this? I don't know. Let's give it a try. Okay, so now I've got the little uh, sponge wind muff thing fitted that comes with the camera. Let's see how we go um, for the last little bit of this walk.